Oh, she did record. Okay. Oh, she's recording. Good. Yep, she got the recording going. Yay. <laughs> All right. Well, we are we are now in <laughs> yes, you type you type and we'll, we'll see. We'll read your answers. Are we so we're now in part two of Renunciation, Chapter One, Father Charles. So now we have a bit of a time jump in our book. So as we're sitting here look, noticing now, we have Alcione has finished her school. So she is now 17. And Robbie is just starting his schooling at seven years old. So he's just now starting his time in school. And we got Father Daimyo and Magdalena all here, but we've also switched houses. So, <laughs> and as we're now that we've switched houses, we're realizing because uh, Magdalena has had her troubles with from the from the uh, plague or and everything else when she that she suffered and her feet still hurt and everything else. So now she has this thing where she has trouble walking, but she loves being involved with Father Daimyo. Da Father Daimyo is still deeply involved with his house, Alcione, everything else. So they've, they've built this short little bond and they brought everybody closer together. And as just as a rehash, as he says, like we know that since Robbie is the reincarnation of Antonio, we have to keep in mind that he set up the circumstances that they're in now even though he does not know that he's living under what he created in his past life, even though he's now seven years old and in that same system. But as we go through this, we see that um, Magdalena and Alcione, they are still, they are able to support themselves. They're doing needlework. They are doing stitching. They're, they're creating works and they're able to survive. They're able to, they may not be, wealthy well to do but they are able to make a living and be comfortable there in this little town of avila and as we go through this chapter we start to hear that father daimyo he's getting up there in age and he said and he found out that he's requested help and that he he has his nephew is on his way and and so we're, and so it was great with saying yes that there's this other person here. And we start to find out a little bit about this new person that's gonna that's going to jump into this life and really mix things up. We're going to, in a book full of drama already, we are adding another layer of drama to it and reconnecting a character from chapter one of part one. So we are, so as we're saying here, we have this, but before I get to that, I'm sitting here looking through my notes and I remember Robbie coming home from school and complaining about all the kids bullying him. And I know I'm having this with my daughter, she's getting bullied in school and everything else. And it's funny because I'm reading some of the things that are here and some of the things that I've taught my, uh, my daughter too. And, but they, one of the ones that I highlighted, prayer always soothes the heart. That we need to sit there whenever we, we whenever we're in trouble and pains, um, whenever our sound is out, I guess we need to do a prayer so that we can get, hopefully find the resolution, if not and be inspired with a way to proceed with their talks. But then we see here that they call him Blackie and he's not the real child and everything else. And Magdalena says this wonderful saying, what if they did? If they're at home, I know you're my son and Alcione is your sister. They've embraced him as family, even though they know full well that they adopted him, but they know who the parents are, but they accepted him for who he is. And then he says, that's what that matters. You're my family. So be, be family. Who cares what the others thinks? You and I, as family, that's what matters. We have the strength. And it does seem to help 
uh, placate uh, Robbie a little bit as long as well as saying the Lord's Prayer. So, Angie, try saying something one more time because it looks yes. like you're coming back. Because you, you, your box turned blue for a second, like you got you came back. Say something. Yeah, yes. yeah we can hear you. Yeah. Oh. Because She's back in. I, I'm using my phone to talk, uh, so I'm I'm using <laughs> my my computer. My computer don't have audio, but uh, I'm glad that at least I can talk. Very good. Awesome. Go ahead, Brian. Don't want to disturb this. <laughs> okay. Well, it's just good that you're able to to join in the conversations now. So now that we have that, Robbie has been like it says he's not. He's not totally free, but he accepts that there are people that watch out for him and they're taking care of for him. Yes, he's still going to have to deal with this problem at his school, but at least he knows he has a safe space. People can come to him or he can come home and realize that he is loved. He has family there. Yeah. And even, and but, can I say something? He, but he, you can see the makings of a troubled child because he has all this love at home, and every, you know, they treat him like he is their brother and son. Yet he's never satisfied, and he's only seven years old. So you can see the old Antero, I mean, Antonia, and Antero yeah. coming out, kind of. Yes, you beat me to it. Yes, yeah, and yeah. you can definitely see. You can see. You can see the rebelliousness from Antonio still being there, but also at the same time is remember he loved Magdalena, so he does listen to her, even though now she's his adopted mother, and and he finally has the love from her that he was seeking in his past life, albeit in a different way. It's he's he's getting what he wanted in the past life now, but he's still having to deal with the fact, like I said, the consequences of that past life are with him now not only in his physical deformities, but what he's imposed on his mother and sister from that past life. And then let's see, and then. Yeah, but, but, the, but that, have... what happened is that um, he listened to Magdalena because he loves her, but uh, everybody and... else he's rebellious about because that's his, personality you know was uh, how he was in the previous life and he carried on a little bit of that but because of all his constraints he he is more uh, how can i say he is saving more but uh yeah yeah yes go ahead <laughs> well, you just tickled my memory to go down a, a quick little rabbit hole if for those that are unfamiliar with like the works of Andre Louise in those books, it's usually something that's been commented in the past, how when a spirit discarnates, there's usually a gap, a period of time that they go through a period where they kind of like prepare for their next reincarnation. They go through a schooling and everything else. And if you notice, this one is very short. Antonio is basically reincarnated almost immediately. Yeah. And so, so there is no, there is no real adjustment period, no gap. Whereas, uh, so we have this, this quick changeover. Now, granted, remember this whole story takes place even before Alan Kardec even is alive to start getting, receiving the messages of, for the, for all of the codification. But we are, we are in that period where we have the, the period of enlightenment is, is building up. We see rational thought. We see that we're we're, the, we're seeing the underpinnings that are starting to be what's going to go into place to allow alan kardec to create the codification so let's step in out of the book and now let's get back in the book and sit there with uh introduction of Char uh charles <laughs> just, a, just a moment what, what the, are you gonna say yvonne yeah one more uh, yeah his name is antero yes. rather than antonio I'm oh sorry. yes, yes, I'm Carol. And here, that's all. Okay. <laughs> yes, since this is being recorded, we need to be crucified. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Just because we're recording all kinds of issues, I don't have a sound. Like, oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> 
Uh, Sorry, Brian, you are talking about the introduction of, of the yes, yeah, so we're Go introducing on. we're introducing a new character and I'm, I know they have it introduced here. Uh, Charles Clanahan. I think I'm saying that right. Because <laughs> he also because he got the Irish in him and all this other stuff too. Um, and we bring this person on here, and he is a he's a priest. He's in as part of the system, but then he meets Alcioni. He's like that name is very familiar to me. It's as it's very rare, but yet I know that name. And for those who've hit the little note footnote uh, in the book, notices that now we have reintroduced Pollux from the very first chapter of this book. The what reason why she wanted to reincarnate. Yes. She had a lot of, and, and the funny thing is, well, since I've read ahead a little bit in the book, that same mentality that Alcione has in that first chapter with Pollux does show up, even in this chapter, and we will see it continue on through the rest of this book. And it's it's interesting because she's she does love Pollux, but she can't, she understands that she can't be with him for reasons. And within this lifetime that there are incarnated, she realizes that he had to, he has to remain a member of the church. He is to remain celibate. He is not supposed to marry. He is supposed to give his life to God. And we already see from the very first be uh beginnings when they first meet and as we see in the course of this first chapter that that devotion to god is immediately eroded just by the presence of alcyone it's like he again just like paul uh, just as when he was says pollux he loses himself for the love for uh out for his out for alcyone yvonne Um, I was, yeah, I was going to mention that um, Father Charles or Father Clenahan, that he was forced into priesthood by his mother, right? Yes, I uh, was just about to get into that. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. All right. No, hey, this is a group discussion. So, but yes. Uh, it, but as we understand that they, the, the trials and everything else, then we have Mag, uh, Magdalena and Father Daimyo get together and they have a discussion in which they discuss Father Charles's past and that his mother passed away when he was very young and had it in her will that he be uh, sent to the church at, uh, to become a, a minister, to become a priest. So he was kind of intentionally forced into it. And while Father Daimyo re recognized the sentiment to it. He he didn't agree with it because it denied Charles his choice, and as we see that that because of that it it shakes the faith. And but we also see in here that again we continue to see Alcione, how advanced she is as a spirit that well beyond like as we even as we remember from that very first chapter of the book when they they were talking to him says you don't need to go to earth you've already outgrown it and yet she says i'm willing to go back and be a person that helps and we see that show up time and time again and here we see it here not only as her beautiful voice and singing but also her command of the teachings of Jesus, the and and how it applies, even to the point where, and we as spiritists will start to see the the be, the beginnings of what we understand in the doctrine, because she's she's taking it outside of the Gospels and saying how this is making it universal. It's and we're starting we see it how she's approaching things and how she's attaching these discussions, 
it's giving everyone a, a new way to thought. And this again shows up as we see in later chapters that she, her command is so unique that she continues to inspire all these other people. I see Angie trying to speak or no. No, no, no. I'm just I'm just trying to fix it. It's driving me crazy. <laughs> but let's uh that's a focus in the in the in the study. Then I fixed it. But um yeah, I was Sioni, she was like a, a special child since, since since little. So she is that type of uh you know, like a, like nowadays in spiritism, people want to see those kids who are very, very loving and very bright and very caring, advanced for their age. So we understand they are rare. It's not like people think it's like, oh, millions, not millions. There are some that are called the crystal children. It's different than the indigo. We know. There is a book that uh, Givaldo Franco and uh, Dr. Vanessa Anceloni wrote together, and it's about the indigo and crystal children. And it, it's very small, but very beautiful. And explain about the indigo is millions of children that are reincarnating on Earth. And these indigo children, they are extremely intelligent, extremely intelligent, are really ahead of time. But it doesn't mean they are morally educated. They are wild. They are many times rebellious because they have this brain, super, super smart. But it doesn't mean they are so morally evolved. But Alcione is the crystal one. The crystal one, they are more rare and they are reincarnated on Earth to push the planet to become better, faster with their examples and um i know alcione didn't come to earth to push the planet because she wanted to push her love you know her lover to improve but uh, she is one of those spirits that we call nowadays the, the crystal children they are so special <laughs> go ahead brian <laughs> um mm -hmm. comment brian you um you I had an aha moment because when you mentioned that she didn't, um, Alcyon didn't have to come back because she was already an elevated spirit. And as we went um, back in time, you know, to Alcyon's childhood in that time, that even as a child, she already was um, displaying characteristics of an elevated being on earth so you jogged you know you made that connection for me because i i wasn't thinking about that first chapter where she didn't have to come back to earth right. she was only coming back to help um you, um her and you see that and you're right you as you mentioned the love in her heart reached out to the fact that she embraced robbie back mm -hmm. as her brother i mean she's the one that that set that in place not uh, she embraced Robbie as brother and everything else. And, and so everyone adopted and, and gained to it because of her love for her younger brother. But yeah, then the same book, in, uh, the inner generation, the crystal child that they mentioned in that book is Akiani, the, the young artist that's living right there in Jupiter. And that what I just met last year. And you're right. She, that when you get in, get close to her, she has an aura around her that just serenity, that just surrounds her. And it's amazing how much, what goes out of your head when you're in her presence. I mean, no politics, no news, no, no garbage. It all just gets, it just goes away. It's, a, it's amazing that, and you get that euphoric feeling. I think this is, I can, and as Emmanuel wrote about it in 2000 years ago, when he met Jesus, it, this it's given me a much smaller scale, but it's like being within a hundred feet of Akiani, you had that, that same serenity, that same euphoria. And I can only imagine how much this home, how much love is in this home and it permeated 
because of her spirit, her presence. And you can see the warmth that comes into this house. Father Damiano comes in and is inspired and everything else. He's like, wherever Alcione is, she's she improves everyone around her. And she's like Magdalena is able to bear the suffering of lo losing her husband. Uh, to, and then the Robbie, the one that as Antero uh, reincarnated, embracing him as a brother. It's like you have all of this love, and you're going to see that she even loves she her love for Charles, Father Charles shows up. She does love him, and he loves her. But she also, rem she still remembers her mission. She for she came in this life and she, she remembered that she had to be, that she knew that she was the better of the two and that he had to step up. He had a challenge. He needed to, uh, so to survive this trial, and she was coming to help him. And he was struggling mightily, but it seems to be that even her presence derails it, it starts to derail it, even though he, she makes it, he's like inspired and, and ha he keeps learning wonderful things. But his passion is overriding what he's there to do. And Alcione has to keep reminding him that, no, you need to stay in this. This is your profession. Stay with it. I can love you from afar. We can love without being romantically involved. I can love you and support you and everything else without the kisses, the hugs, all of that. You need to learn to do the same. And I'm hoping that we'll and and we're hoping to see as these book as the things as the book progresses we'll see if he does or does not survive in that challenge so isn't and, that yeah. the amazing like like think about the think about us normal human beings it is so difficult to imagine you know, I, I i just i just talk about myself like uh, alcion oh. is so super special because it would be really difficult we meet someone that we absolutely love and we would like to be together and uh and then uh, the person say no now the the situation changed i can't do that and uh, we we have to be friends it's like oh my god it's devastating it's like a very very difficult but uh, this is to 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 demonstrate how different that she is and she is so understanding of it and uh, just saying i i will love you i will continue loving you but like, oh my god <laughs> <laughs> and that is brutal i've been there been there done that my own personal experience uh, angie you might remember my uh spiel from the last glamping trip so when we were doing that we were we were we were strangers together which uh, yes yes i remember painful painful memories painful it's things that happen to us that are difficult but we have to be strong and be able to move on and mm -hmm. that's not it but we have to yeah that's the the book i had to leave the class i had to leave before i could join this one we're I was studying plenitude with Peter and love and light. We're reading plenitude and then that book, I, I had to leave early just to jump over on this one. So, <laughs> but I haven't read plenitude, so I'm reading that one too. So <sighs> the array of books, <laughs> <laughs> but so um, is there anything else from the, the chapter? Well, I, like I said, I know I kind of pushed through this because I know we I had compressed things a little bit with the with the time that we have because I, I like I said because we do have we do have Charles he does confess his love and this is where Alcione pushes back and says no I can't love you I can't and like you've got to stay with the faith you've got to be 
I mean, she gives every reason in the book, well-meaning reasons. Even Father Damiano just jumps in and sits there and is like, she's got a point. It's like, yeah, you may not have liked it, but this is your this is what you're on, and you should stick to it. Use this as an inspiration. And and you see, and you see that, and then uh, it even sets up for when we go into chapter two he's sitting there saying you know what it might be good to put some distance between these two alcione can keep can keep her wits about her but i'm worried about charles and i've been wanting to go to the new world so let's make arrangements to go over to the new world magdalena is sitting there saying hey she wants to see what happened to find out news about what happened to her in-laws that made it over to Connecticut, she wants to go see them and everything else. And they says, well, let's go to Paris. So we're gonna finish this chapter in Paris to give that space between the two. And while it's, Magdalene is difficult with it and everything else, she's saying, okay, it's a temporary thing before we go to the old, to the new world. And now Sione is like saying, like, I'll be there, I'm supporting you. Because as we as we were just discussing with the Chris, uh, as her as Alcione being who she is, she's giving loving support to everyone around her. So she's going to brace she's going to brace up her mother, knowing that it's going to be painful for her to go back to the place where she found her love, where but also her sickness and death, and so she's got joy and suffering in equal measures going back to Paris. She knows she loves father charles but realizes that she knows that she has to get step away to give him the strength to pursue keep going on, his, on and, and build the strength within himself to keep going in the profession of the faith father damiano it says well he's the uncle and he's like i'm going to keep sending messages i'm going to keep corresponding and giving him inspiration to stick to it so he's going to keep and he's going to reinforce so like you have alcione helping buttress up Father Charles, you got Father Damiano buttressing up Father Charles so that he can get through it. And then Alcione is also supporting both Father Damiano and Magdalena as they're preparing to go to the new world. You can see this interconnection relationship, but you can see that since, as we were talking earlier, as profound of a spirit as Alcione is, she is, she's got this love and support that radiates out and helps everyone around her. You can see it, her connections to help lift Magdalena, lift Robbie, lift Father Damiano, lift Charles. Everyone she meets, she lifts up. And, we'll, and, and we're sitting there saying like, as they're preparing to move, she's lifting them all up, inspiring all the time, giving them loving and support and encouragement. One one thing that we also know. Oh, do you want to comment before, Sonia? Go ahead. What happened? Uh, Charles thinking that he's gonna it's gonna be better for him. He confesses to Magdalena and Father Damiano about his love for Alcioni. So, mm -hmm. and both of them start thinking that they need to remove her from that uh, from that. So she can forget about him so that's when or, they decide, they decide to go to france that he can forget about her more so than her, she can forget about him right because and so he can focus in like i said on that profession yeah because she reminded him of his obligation to god mm -hmm. so he will stay as a priest right because mm -hmm. she's remembering her commitment to god above all things yes in her. and she and yes even though she is she's willing to suffer and say oh i love you but you're you're you you are required to be celibate so i must i must respect the wishes of the culture and say i may love you but i can't be with you and even though she has suitors she's basically said no i'm not gonna i'm gonna live my life unmarried because the person i love devote is devoting himself to god and i'm supporting him by not marrying him mm -hmm. so that he may fulfill his mission 
So okay, so let me just uh, let me just uh, remember because now I got a little confused. I I read this chapter such a long time ago. <laughs> so before he got married, no, before he became a priest, he, he was married, wasn't it? No. No. Oh, so he never got married. No. He became a priest. Oh, Jesus. okay. I His thought mother... he had that's, that's that is in another chapter. Else. He gets married further another down. Chapter. Ah, okay. So he gets married further down. Yes. He, yeah, in yes, this, yes. In this chapter, yes. in this chapter, he was um his mother died and, and basically willed him to become a priest. So he was basically orphaned into the priesthood. So he That's grew not. up to become a priest. So he has not known any life out really outside of that, but his heart was not truly in it. He didn't choose it of his own free will. It was imposed on him. And we see that. And because of that, we see this challenge of the faith and the challenge of the spirit. And even though Alcyone in their conversations does buttress his faith a lot, it doesn't, uh, his heart, his love, his passion, still overrides his brain his logic his commitments so we still see yes. we still see that he's as in chapter one part one pollux could not devote himself fully to the faith he just could not build the link to love god above all he still yeah. he yeah. still has a passion which is he looked uh it was alcyone yes yeah this is true we we remember when they they were going to reincarnate he was so excited that uh, that uh, she was gonna go and with her everything would be fine and blah 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 and then yes yeah, she was mentioning love god above all we're gonna be brothers you have a commitment but he was overwhelmed he didn't he didn't even think about that and um yes wow it's so interesting when we talk about this because we think wow can you imagine how many promises we probably did in the future realm before we return and then we, we are here i'm like yes i hope we are doing at least a portion of everything we promised to do so at least we are on the path <laughs> because you, you know we never know and another thing, um, Brian, you're mentioning well, Alcione is helping everybody around her, she's lifting them. Yes, it is true. But we also know that uh, we usually reincarnate with a group of people, they are supposed to help us. So I'm not saying Padre Damiano was supposed to help her, but he was maybe he doesn't even know or nothing he said in the book but maybe he's one of the persons that were sent together in this group just to to help because there's going to be so many so many troubles were going to happen with uh, Alcione and uh, maybe other spirits were sent in order to help her to navigate this dangerous reincarnation that the she asked for so maybe that's a, a possibility we don't know not in this chapter yeah because when she has to reincarnate sorry yeah when she has to reincarnate the angels told her that she's gonna be she was gonna be in a lot of trouble and if she was sure that what she wanted to do and she assured them that yes she knew what she was getting into no, she knew, she knew definitely. But uh, we know that every single reincarnation is planned, even hers. Yes. Remember when we thought uh, the, the first child was her in the, in the, in the in reality was her mom. So everything was planned ahead. The, the, the mother came first and she came much later. So what I'm saying is that maybe Father Damiano was one of the spirit that came before to prepare the terrain because uh, he wanted to help her. 
I'm just this is a speculation because it's not said in the book. I'm just thinking, oh maybe who knows? <laughs> Yeah, I was gonna say it is. It, that was an it's an interesting thought. I, I'm I'm disagreeing only on the matter of Father Damiano was inspired by Alcioni. Whenever he brings up questions, Alcioni brings it from another perspective that inspires him. He is he is pretty advanced, and he has and he has a, a welcoming command because he does give Magdalena a lot of support, and he is. But he but yet when he when when he meets Alcioni, Alcioni still surpasses him on the knowledge of the Gospels and the, and the universal things. So it's like he might be, uh, as he might have like been brought in to help be a support, but he's not uh, the same level as Alcioni. Yeah, so, we know that. Mando himself mentioned in the in the preface of the book that she mm -hmm. was a light that he had never met before. So we know she is more advanced than, than him than himself, and he is Emmanuel. So yes, at that at that incarnation, in she was much more elevated than than himself. It's still the at least in the English book, they it still does not say Emmanuel was Father Damiano. It says Emmanuel met Father Damiano and Elcioni. They never said they were the same, that he was the same person. I still haven't read that. I even read, after last session, uh -oh. I reread the preface twice just to try uh -oh. to sit there and find the words. And it's and it says like, no, Emmanuel meets Father Damiano and Alcioni talking under a tree and everything else. They're having conversations still. Uh-oh. And Emmanuel this meets. This is a wrong translation. Because uh, Unless the, it says it later on in the book. In yeah, place. the preface in the in the Portuguese the in, um, the Portuguese uh, versions talks about uh, old memory, and uh, and then it goes on talking about uh, uh, talking about her reincarnation. Well, I'm cutting into <laughs> I'm cutting into well, we're the almost, chapter. We're at, we're, at the end, we're at the end of our time. It's it's almost nine o'clock. Or 10 uh -huh. Sorry, I'm on Central Time. So, oh, okay, yes, because um, let, well, I don't want to read in I, my version here is in Portuguese, but it let me try to translate quickly. Um, talked about the uh, old memories and talked about um, who could remember. Uh, and they talk in a very romantic way of uh, of the old uh, the old memories and then it says that uh, he remembers Alcione since the childhood and uh, many times uh, she sees the, he sees her and he says we priest Damiano but uh, in the end that he thinks that he say that uh, he is Damiano like he talks like I see her with Chris Damiano in the old time he saying um passando ao pôr do sol in the in the sunrise and it goes on in a very romantic uh, way and then um wow well, it's, it's it's too many things to to translate all of this right now but um I'm gonna reread again and uh see if I can translate everything and then we can regroup and the, the next time we be together yes. and uh, we can we can really see if uh if i'm uh, i'm mistaken here or if uh, in the end he gives the idea that he is a uh, he is a uh, damiano himself because right now yeah because i see that I, but, I see that second paragraph i remember alcioni from the days of her childhood i used to see her walking with father damiano in an old spanish churchyard at sunset if anything it could be the other father the one that's in charge of that a villa uh thing that might be emmanuel like the one that sends sends when father damiano and them leave for paris mm -hmm. yeah. there's a minister that stays behind in the villa i'm wondering if that's might be actually a, a, a emmanuel hmm. 
I'm gonna reread this uh, this portion and then uh, and then uh, we can go back and and talk about this because I remember even um, who was I remember many years ago many many years ago before I read this book. I think it was Eduardo de Maran who, who said, and uh, Damiano is one of his reincarnations, he said in the book. And then when I read, oh, yes, it's, it's hidden. But yes, let's reread in, in detail to, to be able to understand it. But this is an amazing book. I love this book. It's so powerful. And her, her examples move, uh, move us. I, I, well, later on, will more things will happen and i remember like oh my goodness how she's so strong to 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 be able to do it just like she is really from another planet <laughs> <laughs> yeah like i guess now that i'm in chapter four i am seeing some of those wheels and things that are unfolding oh. and so like uh and yeah it's, like I, the um, part that i read is just literally where um spoiler alert uh, Charles does leave leave the faith and chases after them into oh. to France, and she fi and they find him, but uh, haven't got to the point where he I guess marries. So, oh yes, that's the that's an interesting one. Ah, my goodness, one day we will be like this. One day. <laughs> Here it is. Here I just I just read it. Uh, any, any uh, any extras from 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 Sonia or from Yvonne that you think we should mention in this chapter? No, I, th I think he did a really good job. Yes, <laughs> he did. <laughs> <laughs> Very good, Raya. Very good. Thank you so much. This is awesome. This is awesome. So, oh. who wants to summarize the next chapter? I can do it. I'll do it. <laughs> awesome. Very good. Very good, Sonia. I will add you here. Phenomenal. Thank you so much. This is a blessing having you all here. And this book is a blessing. So super happy that you're all. I think you all have finished the book. Did you all finish the book? Yeah. No. Yeah. That's right. Okay. I will control myself to not tell you many details. <laughs> yeah, you already spoiled one, but that's okay. Um, Angie, right now, Dom, uh, Damiano's devoted friend, the Augustinian Father Amancio Malozek, was that's the name that's popping up. I'm wondering if that's Emmanuel, especially hmm. when it mentions Augustinian. Hmm. Ah, Augustinian. Well, very good. And this I is, will the, this is in, the it's, first start, it's in chapter two. Or it, when we get into it, Damiano's friend devoted because he's still in it. It's according to the news sent from he's arranged for a modest house in the Saint Marcel district, from Marlena. So I think Emmanuel's the one that helps him set up in Paris. Oh, especially okay. when now, that, especially when I'm reading that Augustinian, I'm like, that sounds like Emmanuel. Yes, we can we can dig in. I will ask some friends also to help out with this. With this, let's see if uh, they, they know more information. But it's, very good. It's a mystery I want solved. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so, Yvonne, can you can you do us a final prayer? Sure. Thank you. Okay, let's center ourselves and uh, pray to God our maker to the to the benevolent spirits that were here today we thank you for your presence we thank you for this um interesting conversation about our spiritual life through the story and how we should be cognizant of those that are around us um, help us to be charitable to everyone and as we go through the rest of this week into the next few weeks we ask you to help us to spread compassion around us 
And so be it. So be it. Um, very, very good. Thank you. Thank you so much, everybody. It was just, awesome. Just something, just 